Hello fellow YouTubers, this is N0AGI. Today I'd like to do a quick uh, demo of my packet node that is running on the 145670 uh, frequency here in the Twin Cities area. It is currently set up uh, using FT2900 and a Cantonix KPC9612+. Plus and uh, the the watt meter and the SWR meter is attached to this setup just so I can monitor any reflected power back but uh, that's the setup currently the Cantronix TNC exposes uh, a few services on the air one is a basic digipeter in that frequency so that other nodes can use my digipeter to get to other nodes so sort of like a bridge and sort of like a repeater so hence digipeter so a so basic service as a digipeter it exposes a PBBS service it also exposes a, a Cantronix KA node think of a KA node uh, similar to how you would think of a, a network node in your house wherein you can explore or discover other nodes in your network a similar model can be implemented using the radio frequency and nodes that are attached to that frequency so technically what what that does is it provides other ham radio enthusiasts to be able to explore and discover other nodes running on this frequency by hopping between nodes so I can connect to a node way up north using nodes that are in between me and those other far away nodes if you will so we'll talk a little bit more about that it also exposes a WinLink RMS gateway service through the RMS gateway packet application running on my ham workstation here that's in summary that's a setup in my base station right now I will walk through using that service using my shack to go version 2 project uh, you may have seen this my in my other video if not please do you would be using this while you're on the road uh, it's currently set up using FT857 running KPC 3 plus and uh, a, a really nice uh, battery pack uh, and of course the, the laptop so more on that on in my other video but I'll be using this setup to be able to get on the air and connect to the base station services and then from here on see how I can uh, discover other nodes in the in the network so just a quick short video I'll be right back so on the left here this is the shack to go client setup and on the far on the right here is the base station packet node setup so we're going to be using the client uh, that will go up on the air to connect to the uh, base station node and then check email through the winlink service that's running in that other server there so we will also be demonstrating uh, in this video the the ability for the client station to connect to the node for things like uh, PBBS or as a digipeter or things such as going to the net nodes or discovering other net nodes uh, on this frequency so here I have two windows open both of these are remote desktop connections to my uh, stations here this uh, remote desktop is connected to my ham workstation server uh, and it is currently running the rms packet gateway server application it's currently listening in for incoming packet requests for for email in the back here this is the the shack to go laptop so I remoted into that where this one is currently running the RMS Express as a client application that will go out and check for emails. I'd like to do a quick demonstration of uh, the client connecting to the server 
over the air through the TNC over the air. So let's get started. So here, let me first launch a, a quick email going into message, new message. Let me send it to myself, n0agi at n0agi.com. Let's call it test email and call it test email for YouTube video. And then what I'd like to do is post it to the outbox. And when I do that, you can see here in the outbox folder in the RMS Express, I have this email waiting to be sent out. As soon as I go into the open session, what I'm selecting here is a among the various options, I'm selecting packet uh, windlink 2K and I'm gonna hit on the open session. So when I click on open session, it opens up this window. Think of this window as a connection dialog. What I'd like to do is connect to my, the base station, which is N0 AGI-10, or you can go into channel selection here and it pulls up all the channels or the st stations that are in the uh, local area. So that's my station right there. And I have selected that as my station and I'm going to it directly without having to go through a, a digipeter because my base station is not too far away from where I am at with my shack to go. So once I selected that, I can hit start. Once I hit start, you will start noticing the, the requests come into the uh, the base station's Windlink server or the gateway application. Let's get started. Start. As you can tell, this is sending the connection details and the server or the gateway application is receiving the request from the client and is establishing the connection. Over here, it's right now, it's sending the email that we just created and and basically that's a transaction happening between the two stations once the email has been sent it's it, it's going to disconnect from the server or the gateway application and uh, you will receive a disconnect reported after the disconnection happens so that's a quick demo of how the client connects to the server over the air what I'd like to do is I'd like to go to a, a different server. This time I want to go to a, a neighboring Digipeter or other Winlink server by name N9Mech-10. Uh, but for my shack to go, this is a little bit further away. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go through my home base station as a Digipeter and then go to this uh, Winlink node here or the gateway node. So let's see how that works. This time what happens is the client will send the request to N9 Mac 10 via my Digipeter from home. So you will see some connectivity transactions happening here. As you can tell, the connection has taken place using the base station's node as a digipeter and a successful connection has been established uh, with this node. And uh, there we go. So the connection has been uh, terminated after the email checking is completed. So that's another quick example of the checking email over the radio RF uh, using WinLink as a gateway and uh, WinLink's RMS Express as a client. So here I'd like to demonstrate the packet node operation between the the client 
and the base station. Let's make sure my call here is N0AGI-8 and here my call is N0AGI-10. So the first example is to check the PVBS connectivity using the client with the base station. So I'll go and connect N0AGI-12. N0AGI-12 is the the base station's PBBS call sign. So let me connect to that. As you can tell, the client is is now connected with the base station. And I just turned down the, the money on or the monitoring on uh, on this TNC just so we can see the traffic coming in. So over here I can say, hey, uh, show me a list of all the emails or show me a list of all the nodes that are connected. So, and then let's see, I wanna see all the uh, list of emails waiting in my PBBS. Right now there's there are no emails, but let me try to send one, send N0 AGI dash eight. And then what is the subject? Let's say test uh, PBBS email. And the mail message would be hello. And then I can go control Z. So now if I list it for emails, it should show the email I just sent myself. Basically it says, uh, messages number one, it was sent to N0 AGI from N0 AGI, the date when it was sent, etc. So, and then I can say, I wanna read this email, read one, and that's the email that we sent ourselves earlier. So that's a quick demonstration of the PBBS and the way you exit out is by pressing uh, or typing in B for buy and then we are done. Another operation that I'd like to talk about is the node operation wherein you can discover other nodes on this frequency by connecting uh, to a node and from there traversing to other nodes. I sort of like hop on hop off traversing to other nodes in the in the uh, network. So the way you do that is I have a, a node here, an alias uh, called my node, MNPLK for Minnesota Prior Lake. Uh, and the way I will connect to that is say connect MNPLK. And that's the, the Twin Cities packet node. There are a lot more possibilities with the packet node interface. Now I can say N for show me all the nodes that the base station has heard and or show me all the stations uh, that the base station has heard. So let's try the all the stations first. So now what we are seeing here is a list of all the stations that my base station has heard over time. And now I want to see all the nodes that I heard or the base station has heard and that should be a limited list. So basically I have about whatever, five stations that I heard and those five stations happen to be uh, network nodes. So let's say I connect to MPLS DN hosted by WD0HWT-4. I can go connect MPLS DN. And now we are connected to MPLS DN through the N0 AGI node, the MNPLK. So now we are in the MPLS DN network node. From here, we can again go show me all the nodes that you have heard. And we'll now be able to see a list of nodes that MPLS DN has heard over time.
Okay. So now I hope you can virtually see how this is working. Base station, rather my, my shack to go station has connected to my base station. And then once I connect it to my base station, I'm now traversing from my base station to MPLSDN station. So now we are two hops away from my shack to go station, which is phenomenal to hear because we're, we're doing all of this stuff through RF over radio. I'm at MPLSDN node. Let's say I want to connect to uh, something close by. Let's say MNMONT, uh, connect MNMONT. Now we are trying to go to three hops away from the shack to go station. Obviously, there's some latency in getting the results back because now the, the data has to go forward three hops and the results have to come back three hops back to you. So there's some delay. Hopefully, this will come back soon. So it looks like the MN Mont node has declined the connection, probably because it's busy with other connections. We don't know. We are back at MPLSDN node. Uh, let's go back to the node and see what stations it has heard again. Perhaps we can try connecting to the Maple node here. Connect Maple. So now we are getting the response back from Maple. So now we are in the Maplewood node. Uh, now we are three hops away from my shack to go. So let's do a quick uh, node check on the Maple station. So this is a response coming back from the Maple station. Obviously, it will be slower because of the three hop situation. So here we have a list of stations or nodes that the Maple node has heard. One of them happens to be my node here, as you can tell. You could connect back to your node from all the way from the Maple node, and then my node will then establish a second channel connection, which is definitely possible. For now, I'm going to go back and disconnect. Let's uh, disconnect from Maple by simply hitting buy. So now, as you can tell, it has disconnected from all of the nodes that I was connected to by simply issuing one a disconnect or by command. Disconnected me from Maple and then from MPLSDN. MNPLK, my base node, has also disconnected. There is a way to persist a connection once you hit a by on a particular node. There's a way to have the connection persist at the previous node instead of disconnecting all of the nodes and that's very easy to do. So that's a quick demo of the node operation in uh, the base station and the, uh, the shack to go. So we covered uh, windmail using RMS Express and the RMS packet gateway. We covered PVBS setup. We covered um, Digipeter service and we covered the node discovery as part of this video today. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please do drop me a note. Thank you and uh, have a good day.